Welcome into another episode of Lynx Unleashed, the official podcast of the Minnesota Lynx. Wendell Epps here with Alana Smith. Lan, thank you so much for joining the show. Thanks for having me. Alana Smith, huge shot. Smith, top of the key three, trying to make it 14. She does. Alana Smith, another three-pointer. That one's good again. Alana Smith, back to back, just like that. Drilling that one with ease. She is on fire. Land, first thing first, just want to go back to your childhood. Talk about how you grew up. What were some of your interests? I assume basketball was in the mix there, but talk about what life was like for you as a child in your early life. Yeah, I uh, grew up in a basketball family. Um, My dad and his brother, my uncle, played professionally, and my uncle played for the national team as well. He captained the team and went to a couple of Olympics, I think. And my aunt played in the local league in Australia, the WNBL. So I kind of grew up surrounded by basketball and professional basketball players. But I actually didn't get into basketball till I was like 13. So I consider myself a late bloomer. Wow. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, talk about, I know you went to Stanford for college, obviously a great academic school and, and great place to play as well. Uh, talk about the decision to go there. I mean, coming from Australia, I know that had to be a big move for you. Yeah. When I was around that age of deciding whether or not I wanted to go to college, it wasn't very popular in Australia. There were a few Australians in college, but it wasn't encouraged to go but I had kind of my my dad and my uncle uh, in my ear telling me that I should go. And Stanford was like my dream school. But at that time, they had never had any international players before. They never recruited internationally. So I was emailing them probably every day for three months straight before they finally responded, like, please stop emailing us. (laughs) Um, And so... Once we kind of started a correspondence and got them to, like, listen, (laughs) we kind of managed to force our way into a visit and they offered and I got accepted and it was just a no-brainer. Wow. Yeah, no, I bet. That's uh, that's an incredible story, honestly, moving to to Stanford. So you did you grow up watching any American basketball or like how was that kind of like for you in Australia? Yeah, I kind of I watched Lauren Jackson play. I watched Penny Taylor play. But mostly I, I watched my dad. Like I grew up in stadiums watching my dad play professionally. So I was watching a lot of men's basketball when I was a kid. And then when I started playing, that's when I started getting back into watching the women's side. Awesome. You obviously come to the WNBA 2019, actually same draft class with Fee and BC and T. Like the whole team is almost drafted in 2019, which is awesome. Began your career in Phoenix. Take me back to, to draft night. What do you remember most uh, about that special night for you and your career? The draft night was just like the like apex of all the hard work I'd done and like those four years of college, like don't get me wrong, college was awesome, but it was also a grind. And just that night kind of solidified all the hard work I felt like that I'd put in. And my dad was there, I had a couple friends there with me too. Phoenix Mercury select, Alana Smith from Stanford University. So the eighth pick, Alana Smith. She goes to a Phoenix Mercury team. She just has an incredible motor. Uh, she impacts the game on both ends. Yeah, it just it felt surreal. Like it didn't it didn't feel real, honestly. Well, take me back to earlier this year now when you first decided to come here to Minnesota. Walk me through that decision and what were some of your first impressions of this Lynx team and when you first came here to Minnesota? Cheryl and the Lynx had always been in like the back of my ear every uh, recruiting season or every free agency season. They were like hey, like, if Lana wants to come to the Lynx, she's coming. <laughs> she's in. <laughs> we'll, we'll take her. <laughs> um, but this year, just, uh, it seemed like it was the perfect time, like, right timing. There was a need for me. And I just, I felt like uh, I was I was really wanted, you know. And so it was, free agency is always a tough time. Like, it's, it's tough. And I had such a good season. And I felt like I had a little bit more of uh, like opportunity to be able to choose where I wanted to go. But I just think like what the links have to offer is so hard to compete with. Like you've got great people, you've got great facilities, they've been treating their players well for forever you know (laughs) so the decision was made easy in the end yeah four championships can't beat that well talk about this season for you Lynn. what have been some of your impressions about this year i know the Lynx obviously off to an incredible start you played a huge role in that success starting at center Uh, just what have you taken away so far uh, from this start of the season with the Lynx? yeah i just think that we're playing a team game and it's hard to 
play against teams that use all five of their players on the court because like what do you do you can't just focus on one person you've got the other four to worry about as well and I think we're pretty balanced offensively and defensively and we just play with so much heart and effort like you can't coach those types of things and so when you've got a team full of people that play like that um you don't have to worry about it you can right. go into the details stuff and like you can rely on people doing everything at 100 percent effort it's just been it's been fun and I'm, I'm looking forward to what we will see for the rest of the season yeah too. so many great games have already happened i still remember that first game in seattle where you went crazy in your first game uh, with the links Somebody's got to cool her off. She is in double figures inside Smith again, and she is just killing Seattle. Great point. And a Smith for a career high, and she's got it. Take me back to that first game. What, what were emotions were you feeling on the day of the game? Did you envision yourself maybe having a performance like that to open up your Lynx campaign? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I was nervous. Like I, I still get nervous before every game. Like I can feel little butterflies in my tummy. Um, but... <laughs> No, I just, I think I was trying to focus on the things that I could control. So like I said, effort, defense is one of those things, rebounding and, you know, I'm going to shoot it obviously, but sometimes it's not your night and you can have other things to control. But I think like it was really cool because it was my night in Seattle. Yeah, right, it <laughs> was. Very nice. It definitely was. There's a reason we interviewed you post game that night too. That's awesome. And how has it been like playing center? Because I know a couple of times you've kind of touched on how it, it's different, you know, maybe compared to some other centers in the league, probably not as physical, but you make up for it a lot with your IQ because it, it's stellar there on the floor. What have you seen from that? What do you think that's allowed you uh, to be able to grow uh, playing center for this Minnesota team? Yeah, I, I think I've kind of shied away from being a center in the past. I never thought that it was like part of my game that I would be really effective in, but like coming into this team and um, the way I've been coached and instructed has like really, really helped me kind of carve my own space as a center. I wouldn't even really call myself a center, maybe like defensively, yes. Honestly, in my head, it's about just like being relentless. I, I think I mentioned this to someone the other day because I'm undersized and maybe can't compete as strong as other centers. It's just about being relentless. And I, Cheryl told me one time that I was just like, a really annoying defender and she loved it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, Cheryl River proves we're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I remember Fee saying to me too, she was like, the reason we wanted you here in uh, in Minnesota was because like, I hated playing against you. Like, <laughs> I hated when you were defending me. And I was like, oh, sick, I'll yeah. keep doing it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, how does that feel? I mean, when you have someone like Fee and Cheryl Reeve, I mean, uh, one of the best players in the league, one of the most storied coaches in WNBA history, you know, vouching for you like that and, and really just in your corner. Confidence is a really important part of playing professional sports and it, it just fuels your confidence, you know. Um, it helps you play with a little bit of freedom and allows me just to like play my game the, no, uh, the way I know I should be playing it, which is being really annoying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Keep it up, it's working. Yeah. Well, I know this season has obviously brought a lot of great stories and memories and moments, but is there one moment so far that has stood out to you with the links? It could be on the court, off the court. Do you have like a favorite story that you could share with us here on the podcast? Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind was uh, <laughs> it was a preseason game and it was like, maybe the second or third quarter. So it was like mid mid game and maybe the second preseason game that we played. So we hadn't been together for that long. And I think uh, there was a few of us on the bench and T was sitting on my left and she just like turns around to all of us and goes, man. I love you guys <laughs> and, and we'd known each other for like two and a half weeks and she's in there like I love you guys I love playing with you guys and like we all turned and looked at each other and we we're like you know what like yeah yeah I love you guys too <laughs> it was just such like a cute moment and I think just kind of like foreshadowing almost for the Absolutely. season like we just love playing together it's a joy being around each other um and we knew it from the get-go yeah that's unique and it's it's not easy when you have so many new players coming in you being one of those many new additions and also like these new additions playing big minutes like you courtney t like everyone you know dorica coming in late too and having to get adjusted to everything like it's it's a lot but it seems like the chemistry is just really high with you guys yeah definitely yeah. like props to my teammates who have 
also like adjusted well and just like fallen into the flow of things. It's hard to do sometimes, but we've managed to find a way to do it really, really successfully. That's awesome. And now this being your sixth year, I got to ask Land, as you, you continue to play more seasons in the WNBA, what's the easiest thing about playing more seasons in the W and what's the hardest thing about playing more seasons in a league like the W? I'd have to say like, as you play like more seasons in the W, you kind of know what to expect. I mean, you see the same players almost every year and you know what they're doing. It's like a double-edged sword. Like you, you see the same players, you kind of know what to expect, but then like new seasons roll around and someone will throw something completely new at you that you're not really sure. So like there's parts of the W that you know what's gonna happen and like you know what to expect and you're prepared for it, but then you also have to be prepared for something crazy to happen to. Like we had a great draft class come in this year and they've brought in so much popularity and they've like fueled like women's sports almost. Like women's sports is exploding at the moment. It's, it's awesome to be a part of, but it's new territory. But we're still the same league that we've been for right. previous years, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it's about like, being prepared for what you know is going to come, but also being prepared for anything else. Exactly. It's the whole league itself is unpredictable. <laughs> yes. Every year it changes. Yeah. Yeah. It changes. And how about you off the court, Lan? I mean, we obviously know you're a basketball player. You're very talented at it. But off the court, what are some other interests that you have? I just started doing my master's, actually. I'm doing oh, really? my master's in psychology. So that's going to take up a little bit of my time, too. I really like to have a balance in life like basketball is obviously a very important part of my life but it's not everything um, and so I like to put some part of myself and my energy into other things so studying is one of those and I'm like a bit of a foodie yeah <laughs> everyone is right I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you like to eat you're a foodie yeah <laughs> exactly all right Land. well how about uh on the court you know going back to that what else are you trying to hope to achieve in your WNBA career now I assume winning a championship obviously would be very nice but maybe individually for you what are some personal goals that you have in mind this season especially has kind of uh opened my eyes a little bit or just like i think made me realize that i'm capable of being like an all defensive player like i think i could be on that like defensive team i really pride myself on the defense that i played this year and i think that i make it hard for anybody that i defend so that's probably one goal that i have Okay, awesome. And what's your approach to late game situations? Because I've seen you guys play obviously some really tight games this season, go back double overtime win, home opener against Seattle, obviously some heartbreaking losses too, like Connecticut and Phoenix. But I'm just curious in your eyes, when you're on the floor, like in late game situations, say two minutes on the clock, tied ball game, like what, what's your approach? What do you feel in that moment? And what are maybe some of those conversations like uh, with you and some of the other starters out on the floor? It's such an interesting time to be a part of in games because you know that it's like, down to the wire right you kind of have to treat it like that but you also don't want to get so nervous and like hyped up and like that you start making mistakes and you start second guessing yourself so it's a fine line between like knowing that you have to perform in those two right. minutes but also not giving yourself too much pressure so i think a lot of the ways that we communicate with each other is like hey we've got this like keep doing what we know we can do and then like personally, you just have to play till the very last second in, in those moments, especially like do whatever it is you have to do to get a rebound, to defend, to score. Like if it means scrapping for it, you got to scrap for it. Um, that's how I kind of like feel myself in those moments. Awesome. Love it. And if someone came to you and asked, why do you think the Minnesota Lynx can win a championship this year? What would be your response to that? We've got all the pieces to do it. And I just, I, I, I think we've just been labeled as underdogs for too, like Minnesota has been labeled as underdogs for way too long. Like we've just been predicted to not do well for this year, especially like we, were, we weren't predicted to, to do well. And that's kind of fuel to our fire. Like we, we know we're good right. and like we know that we have the possibility to do it. Um, and we're going to prove everybody wrong. Yeah, man. <laughs> amen to that. Yeah, ninth in the preseason power rankings, and look where you guys are now. Just yeah. a great season. Yeah, proving, <laughs> proving everyone wrong. Six years, can I call you a vet? Do you feel like a vet? Is that like an affair, or you feel like maybe 
Not yet. Maybe a couple years. My body feels like a vet. Yeah, your body feels like a vet. <laughs> like oh, that's only been six. Years. But my mind, I feel like a rookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, how's it been seeing some of you know the younger players come in? Right, Alyssa Peely, Dorica Diamond. What have been some of the biggest pieces of advice that you've shared with them about what it's like playing in the W? I think the most important thing is to just be a sponge and like short-term memory you know it's it everything happens so fast and so you can't put too much pressure on yourself to be perfect and do everything perfectly and amazingly like it everything happens so fast we play so many games get drafted you go to training camp and then season starts immediately like you don't have much time to right. prepare so you got to give yourself some grace um and control what you can control and one of those things is learning, just learning from the people around you. So that's kind of my message to our rookies. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And what's your message to young girls that want to get into basketball? I know now more exposure has continued to come towards women's sports, which is awesome. But you know, what are what are some things that you hope that people look up to you? What are you hoping that they take out of your game and also just out of your personality? Yeah, definitely. I well, I think like just going back to how I started, just try. Why not try? And I remember my first experience on a basketball court like I walked in I was late uh, <laughs> don't be late um, but everyone was doing two ball ball handling like dribbling two balls at the same time and I looked at my dad and I just started bawling and I was like dad I can't even dribble one ball <laughs> and they're in here <laughs> dribbling two like don't be discouraged like just if you try and you put effort in that's half the battle like that is honestly half the battle and I think that shows in how I play too like I just I play with so much effort and I want to be the first up the floor every time I want to be boxing out every time like I like just I feel like I want to compete on every level yeah. I love that. And in five years from now, where do you see the WNBA being? I see it as like a global game, to be honest. Like, I think it's already got some, like, the feelers out there, but I, I see it really, really expanding on an international level and becoming, like, one of the most popular leagues in the world, to be honest. Like, it's it's close, but I can see it, like, really, really solidifying itself there. Yeah, awesome. I think matter of time, we'll get more expansion teams in the mix, too, so it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Lan, well, let's go ahead and end this podcast with some rapid fire. How good are you <laughs> in your history of playing rapid fire? <laughs> I'm hit or miss. Hit or miss? All right, let, let's let's see what version I'm you are today. I'm today's my day. All right, yeah, let's do it. All right. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Teleportation. What's one food you can't live without? Coffee beans. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite genre of music? R&B. You're competing in a talent show. What's going to be your talent that you perform on stage? Ooh. Um, one man band. What's your favorite sports movie of all time? Uh, love and basketball. That's a good one. Yeah. Really good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your biggest pet peeve? Oh, my biggest pet peeve. Um, when people walk really, really slow on the sidewalk in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> if you could star in a movie, what genre would it be? Uh, romantic comedy. <laughs> What's the latest TV show that you binge watch? Bridgerton. <laughs> yeah. So Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Netflix? Netflix. Okay. And last thing for you, Land, just what's a fun fact a lot of people don't know about you? I've thrown this one out a lot recently, so I don't know if it's things that people don't know about me anymore. Maybe a lot of people know, but I have been punched in the face by a kangaroo. That's right. You, you share, can you give more context into that story? How did that happen? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a trauma. My favorite question to ask, how did you get punched by a kangaroo? Yeah, it's waiting for this one. I'm sure a lot of people have seen like those photos and footage of like the kangaroos and they're like built yeah they're like, built so they're jacked I, I yeah. didn't get i didn't that wasn't mm. that wasn't the one that i got punched in the face <laughs> by. i got punched in the face by a little one. wow really <laughs> yeah those things they surprise you i was trying to feed it um and i didn't realize that i think it had a baby in its pouch and i just i got a little too close to for comfort i guess and they're ready. They're all, they're always cocked, ready to go. Like they're constantly ready yeah. to throw. Yeah, ready to square up. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. put them in the ring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I just got bopped, unfortunately. But it was a lesson learned. Lesson learned. Lesson How old were you when that happened? 
I was 12. 12. Okay. So, so this old, is, enough this is, yeah, old enough to know better. Old enough to know <laughs> better. Yeah. <laughs> a little old enough. All right. Well, Lam, we really appreciate you for coming on the show. Great to know a little bit more about your background, how you got here to the Lynx. Just what's one final message you have for Lynx fans before we end today's show? I mean, shout out to our Lynx fans. I think like they have helped fuel us as we go. Playing at home especially has been awesome. Like just the atmosphere and stick with us. We are trying to win a championship this year. You heard Alana Smith trying to get that championship. All right, Lan, thank you for hopping on with us. No worries, thank you.